The Auburn Tigers are a four seed despite winning the SEC tournament on Sunday. Welcome on into this live bracket reaction show. I'm Zach Blackerby. He is Daryl Daprich, and this is Locked on Auburn. Great to talk to you for a second time, Daryl. Glad you made it home. The, yes. the Auburn Tigers will be flying to Washington, Spokane, Washington, to take on Yale as a four seed. Just a few hours after we thought it was a done deal, there's no way Auburn uh, would not be a three seed. Yet, here we are. Doesn't really seem like uh, the, the SEC tournament really mattered when it came to seeding. Well, at one point, I'm going to trust my initial instinct on things and stick to what I believe because all year I've said, and we've said going into the yeah. SEC tournament, I said it's not going to matter. Auburn's locked in as a four. And then, stupidly, I allowed myself to believe that the committee actually watched games and used criteria that was consistent from a metric standpoint and thought Auburn was going to be a three seed. Yeah. And you know what? It, it's not that conference tournaments don't matter because Charles McClellan, the committee chairman, Zach, himself, his own lips said, I heard it. I, I did a lot of research driving and listened to an hour and a half of selection committee breakdown. And the best one I found was Mad Dog Russo. And he had McClellan on for 15 minutes and they grilled him. He said with his own lips, Charles McClellan, Iowa State jumped the seed line because they won their tournament. Illinois jumped the seed line because they won their tournament. And Chris Russo said in his Yankee accent, what about Auburn? They won their tournament. Why didn't they jump a seed line? And the guy stammered and stuttered, Charles McClellan, and he said, well, they were the only one of the three that beat a lower seed to win their conference tournament. There's some legitimacy in that. I get it. Until Russo came back and said, Wisconsin ain't no world beater. They weren't a high seed. Couldn't answer it. Radio silence. So I, I just guess my question is, Zach, does net matter? Does Clearly quad not. one? Nope. I, what matters more is quad one wins and history and tradition. Because Kansas, Kentucky, mm -hmm. And even Virginia, who has no business even being in the tournament, and let's not talk about seed lines. They don't belong in the Michigan State, Michigan 19, State. Yep. 19 and 14, they get a nine seed. To me, quad one wins, true road wins, and tradition, blue blood status, matter than net and conference champions, conference tournament championships. Don't dispute it. Don't try to deny it. It's there. He, he said it out of his own lips, the, commission, the, the committee chairman. Now, credit to him for standing in the firing line and taking a lot of questions. I also want to say this, Zach. There's an inconsistency yeah. that some of these guys that have been doing this for a long time that had him on his radio show and challenged him. He said, McClellan, the SWAT commissioner, who's the chairman, the, the committee chair, said road wins – matter more than anything else. They look at that. that, that not eyeball test, not how you're playing in March. It matters just as much how you played in November. And out-of-conference scheduling of road, true road games matter. And his comment was, because you don't play the NCAA tournament at home. And Chris Russo, bless his heart, God bless him, he said, you don't play it on a true road game either, Charles. You're playing it on a neutral site. Why don't you go back and look at teams – resumes on a neutral floor instead of true road games. And again, the frustrating part is the dude didn't have an answer. Well, yeah. that's a good point, Chris. He said, I, I, I don't know why it's not weighted heavily. I guess we consider a road win. So again, the, the metrics and what they measure, you might as well just put a dartboard up. And again, this isn't about Auburn. I felt good about Auburn being a four seed coming into the, co the conference tournament. I'm fine with that. It's yeah. the inconsistencies of how they 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 measure other teams. It's like they have a dartboard and they just throw a dart because certainly Michigan State, Kansas, Kentucky, and Virginia got a lot more love for reputation and tradition than some of the other teams that – and again, Iowa State was almost a one. They almost put Iowa State on the one line. They yeah. almost jumped them two seed lines. 
That comes right out of the committee chairman's mouth. I'm not speculating. I listened to 45 minutes of satellite radio and they had this guy on. And so I don't know. I mean, sometimes seed lines, sometimes conference matters, conference tournaments matter. Yep. Sometimes they don't. All right. So I don't really hate Auburn's draw that much. Um, but I'd rather them be a three seed than a four seed. Sure. And we can go into the differences in a second, especially with the the speculation of a lot of people believing Auburn and Kentucky should be flipped. And, and we'll, we can go over that. I don't think the first two rounds are worse. I, I think the issue is playing a one seed in the sweet 16, but I don't mind Auburn playing Yale and then playing San Diego state. In fact, if they were the three seed in the East, they would have to play BYU, the sixth seed in the second round. I would rather play San Diego state than BYU. If they would have been flipped with Kentucky, you would play Texas tech in the second round. And I, I think I would rather play San Diego state than Texas Tech. I, I do hate the traveling aspect. I hate where they put Auburn geographically. But as far as the matchups leading into the Sweet 16, I, I like Auburn's draw of getting out of the first weekend there than I do the other scenarios that appear to be on the table. Now that I've said all that, let me bring it home and let you tell exact let me tell you exactly. I don't think it matters. I think that Auburn being listed as a four, you are in the NCAA tournament. You're going to have to beat good teams once you get into the round of 32 to advance. Auburn beat Kansas, North Carolina, and Kentucky in 2019 and beat Virginia, except that a referee called double dribble. So or it's didn't not call double dribble. Yeah. I mean, didn't call double dribble. So yeah. it doesn't matter. It, listen, if you're Auburn, you're like, look, don't let anything that happened in the last three hours take away what happened two hours prior. Don't be, don't be a, don't be robbed of your joy of being conference tournament SEC champions. Don't let this get – there is a lot to play for and a lot to be excited about the way this team is trending. Yeah. And guess what? Bruce Pearl will use this as fuel. Totally. He'll play the – look, guys, everyone else got moved up a seed line and we didn't. They don't They don't respect us. They, they don't take us seriously. And the chip on Auburn's shoulder will continue – as they go into, they got a ton of love a couple years ago when they got bounced in the first round and still remained a two seed with the Jabari Smith team, right? They, right. I mean, people could have complained last year. Because yeah, conference Sampson, tournaments don't matter when it comes to seeding. Obviously, it doesn't. Yeah. And then Calvin Sampson last year cried a river because Auburn got to play in Birmingham. How excited were we last year when we did this show? We're like, oh, they put Auburn in Birmingham. People right. were going nuts because of that. So it, it, all yeah. it all balances out. If you want to be a champion, the only thing that I don't like about being a four as opposed to a three is you have to beat the number one seed who just so happens to be the defending national champion in the overall number one seed. You have to beat them in the Sweet 16 to get to the Elite Eight. But you're going to see hey, them sooner or later anyway. Hey, uh, yeah, I don't love playing – the idea of playing UConn in Boston. I don't right. love that. That I think that's pretty brutal. That's uh, almost a home game. Yeah. Yeah. Almost. I mean, it's going to really benefit them geographically for sure, but I mean, it's going to happen. It can't be perfect. Um, and you're going to have to beat teams that are higher seated than you. If you want to go do something special, if you want to get to the final four, you've got to take out these teams. And so uh, I don't think it truly matters. And here's the other things them. back. Uh, let okay. me just tell you this. Sometimes we look at, brackets on paper and when we're filling out our brackets and we start to just assume and speculate and go, Oh my God, this is a tough draw. Not necessarily. How often do things go into chalk in Never. the NCAA tournament? A lot of things can happen from now until next weekend. Like what happened in the SEC tournament where you're like, Oh, this team got upset. This team got upset. Now yeah. you're playing UAB instead of San Diego State, you know, or it, are you playing FAU in the Sweet exactly, Sixteen? The exactly. Eight, that that eight-one upset happens in the round of thirty-two all the time. So you don't know how it. We see it on paper. We assume that it's it's gospel. It's not. A lot of things can happen going into the second day of the NCAA tournament. Yep. There's there's no question about it. So all in all, I, I like it. I like it. But first things first, you have to beat Yale. And it looks like in the live chat that got announced it'll be a 5-15 game. What, what, is that a Thursday or a Friday game? Friday game. I like the extra day's rest, too. It is a Friday? Mm hmm See, this is saying 3-15, what I've got. So I'm curious 
I'm curious which one's great. I guess I it just know, I know really it's Friday, matter. which I'm pretty excited about because again, yeah. you get that with that travel. Spokane, Spokane, Spokane. How you say? It, is not an easy place to get to. <laughs> um, so going all the yeah. way out to the West Coast, you get that extra day, mm -hmm. um, and that's good. That that is good. That is yeah. That's an underrated point for sure. Um, you play after the team you'll be playing the, you know, the winner of, so like you'll play Auburn will play after San Diego State and UAB. I don't love that, but you know, it is what it is. You can't control everything, but we'll, uh, we'll see. I, I like Auburn's chances of getting out of the first weekend. I feel better going into this tournament much better than I did a year ago when, when Auburn got bounced in that second round, but you didn't have Houston, you know, waiting, uh, waiting for you in the second round. You've got probably a San Diego State team. But once again, that 5-12 matchup, that 5-12 upset, I mean, it's historic. It's almost expected at this point for a few 12 seeds to win. Um, but regardless, um, I, I like Auburn's chances against either of them. Think about two years ago also. It matters how you're playing. Auburn is playing. You know, they talk about peaking at the right time. Auburn's playing yeah. as good as anybody in the country. Apparently, the NCAA selection committee didn't realize that. But Miami two years ago, that matchup scared the crap out of me when I saw it on the bracket. People were like, oh, pencil in Auburn to the Sweet 16. They get Jacksonville State and then Miami. Miami was playing good late in the year. San Diego State is not playing good this year late in the year. And everybody that I listened to on three different radio stations that were breaking down brackets was shocked that Gonzaga and San Diego State were both a five seed. They thought that was extremely high for both. Yeah. So yeah. that tells I've you. I've watched San Diego State play a few times this year. I, I think they were kind of thrust into that five seed because of reputation. And remember what San Diego State had last year, Zach, when they beat Alabama in the in the Sweet 16 that they don't have this year? What was the reason given last year that San Diego State was able to upset, upset Alabama? If you remember the one talking point, they had five seniors, and they were all like four or five-year dudes. Some dudes were yeah. even six years. All those dudes are gone. This was a rebuild. And so, I, you know, yeah, give them credit. The Mountain West got way too much love getting six teams. And there are people going crazy about that up in the East and the Northeast when St. John's got left out and yeah. some other teams like that. But I, again, I don't, the Virginia thing just blows my mind. I mean, if that it, isn't, it goes back their, to what you said. It's a reputation. It's thing. a reputation. Kansas being a four seed still reputation. I am shocked out of my mind that Duke's not a three with the reputation. You know, they're a four. They dropped mm -hmm. them a seed line. Um, Kentucky staying as a three, getting bounced in the first round. Not that Kentucky's not a good basketball team. In Kentucky, I would have had them as a three going into the SEC tournament the way they were playing. But I just think that those games have to matter. Or don't, or let's just stop freaking playing them. Well, and, and I want to be clear with our words because we've both said this. Like, the tournament games do matter, but I don't think they matter for seeding. There you go. Don't, they matter to get you can't teams. Tell me, the, right. You can't tell me those kids celebrating and Bruce Pearl's emotional you know, message no, and all that. Like, you can't right. tell me that it doesn't matter. Oh, but, I, it matters to it, me. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you're right. It matters. It matters to those players. It matters to those coaches. It matters to the fan base. Yes, it matters. It's a championship one. I'm just talking about mattering to uh, for yeah, a season standpoint. And it also sure. matters, uh, to take it a step further, to Selection Sunday, get some teams in. That for the resume, they say, okay, they have to get to the championship game, not even win it, but they have to get to the championship game to to be in or to be first four in. They got it. so that matters. I just think from a seeding standpoint, the hay is in the barn. Yeah, yeah, it kind of makes you wonder, like, okay, did they just fill out all this and they hope that you know all the automatic bids they guessed right, or do they just switch those out? It's like, okay, well, this is a one bid conference, so whoever mm -hmm. wins, they're going to be a twelve seed or or whatever. It's it's a shame. It's a shame, but that's okay. I because once again, like I, I don't hate Auburn's draw. I just hate they have to go to Washington to do it. I don't hate playing the, the one seed in the sweet 16. I don't hate because if you're if your idea is to make it to the final four, you gotta do it anyway. You have to odds are you're gonna have to beat the ones and the twos anyway. I have Iowa State losing to BYU. So I have the winner of you know Auburn and UConn playing BYU. I'm very high on BYU and I'm glad Auburn's not playing them in the second round. So maybe that's why I feel so at peace with Auburn being a four seed instead of that three seed and playing BYU. I think they're one of the more under teams in this tournament. 
Iowa State is getting so much love and momentum for not only winning the Big 12 championship, it's how they – I mean, they beat Houston, which a lot of people thought were the best team in the country, was the best team in the country, and they, they absolutely smashed them. So I think that yeah. probably is why they're getting so much leverage. Illinois barely beat Wisconsin, and Wisconsin, to me, wasn't anything special except they beat Purdue, but so did Farley Dickinson last year <laughs> in the 16 versus one. I mean, you know, I, I just yeah. think it's – I get it looking at the whole body of work. But, again, I'm just saying be consistent. If you say true road games matter because the NCAA tournament's not played at home, yeah. well, it's not played in true road game. Well, I guess playing UConn in Boston might be one, but, you know, uh, or Brooklyn. For the people that have to play them in Brooklyn, right. both locations are a, a short car drive. So, yeah. But Auburn right. got to play in Birmingham last year, so it is what it is. Yeah, that's right. And that's honestly a trade I would probably take, if I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. Like one year you get to play two hours from home, then the other you have to travel to the other side of the world. Like I would yeah, I would take that. I would take that. All right, live chat. How far do you have Auburn going in your bracket? We discuss all of those answers and our thoughts in just a moment, right here on Locked On Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. Daryl, you've LinkedIn jobs to hire for your company. I love LinkedIn jobs. As well, you've talked about the screening process. It really just kind of puts it in front of a lot of folks, and then it brings you back the top three or four resumes. What was your experience using LinkedIn Jobs? It took a lot of the work, the legwork out for me, and it gave me serious candidates. I, there's a sifting process that they go through that really yep. by the time you get what you need from LinkedIn, it's it's down to nitty-gritty time, and I really liked that. Yep. Hiring is easy, easy when you get that many quality candidates. So easy. In fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidates within 24 hours. Are you part of that 86%? 24 yes. hours? That sound yes. right? Quick. Yeah. yeah. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. A lot of folks saying sweet 16 for Auburn. I assume they didn't add why. Well, a few have said lost to UConn in Sweet 16. Uh, so I assume that's going to be the most common answer, Daryl. And I think that's fair. I think it is a reasonable expectation with this draw. This NCAA tournament in this day and age of college basketball, it's not like it used to be where the defending national champion pretty much you saw them in the Sweet 16 or the Elite Eight automatically in the next year. It's very hard to get back to the Elite Eight after you've won a national title. That's another thing that might be in Auburn's favor. It just I is. think you're right, dude. And like, I hate to be that guy. It's like the law of averages guy. But I'm that dude, though. I you am know that how guy. Hard it is. Like Gonzaga is in it every year, and like yeah. they never make it past the Sweet Look, Six. It's hard you, when you go all the way to the national title and win it. To get back even to the Elite Eight in the in the in NCAA tournament is tough. Yeah, everybody's gunning for you. There's a wear and tear factor of that. There's the law of that. There's a lot of factors that come into play. So, you know, someone like Houston scares me, who just got absolutely whipped in their conference tournament title game. Is probably going to be very motivated. Mm -hmm. North Carolina, I, I, they've been up and down all year. Um, Purdue, we saw how vulnerable they can be. It's wide open. Yeah, I. I have Houston as my national champion right yeah, now. Houston's, and and I'll I probably think, change yeah. this a few times. I reserve the right to change this with some of these picks, but I, uh, yeah, I've got Houston winning it all right now. I actually have Houston beating Baylor in the national championship, but I'm with you though, dude, like you're not going to win it twice in a row. That would be it's, insane. I mean, it's you, not that, John Wooden. It, it just doesn't happen. Anymore. I mean, that, it's historic. If you, you know, who, I, Florida did it. And that shocked me that they did. Yeah, it they made Billy documentaries Donovan. about it. I see it him pop so up every hard. few years about with so Joe hard. Team Noah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was very difficult. I mean, even the gr the great Duke teams did it a couple times. One of the best college basketball teams I've ever seen in my life in UNLV couldn't do it. Um, you know, you we, we've seen some really elite team, the Kansas teams that were really really good. You know, they they couldn't do it. It's hard. It's very very difficult to do. Uh, Villanova, who, in my opinion, was one of the most consistent blue blood elite programs. Jay Wright won it, and then didn't yeah. get to didn't get to the Kentucky team that was undefeated, right? With Calipari, got beat. 
hadn't lost a game all year, gets beat in the tournament. It's not easy. No, you're Patino's right. Patino's game in 97. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're not just driving through Arby's. You can't be like, oh, this was nice. I'm going to come back tomorrow. You can't do that. It's a can't grind. Do that. It is. It is. All right, so Auburn versus Yale. Obviously, March Madness is a thing. Obviously, the tournament is a thing. But the 4-13 matchup, traditionally, it, it's not the 5-12 upset watch. There's a big jump in percentage. I think it's from 63 to 78% of the four, the four wins as opposed to the five. So like the five team, the five seed wins 63% of the time. The four seed wins 73% of the time or 78% of the time. There's a big jump there. Yeah. That's why you want to stay away from the five. Right. Right. So I like Auburn's situation against Yale. They're going to have more talent. They're more battle tested. And Yale is also traveling across the world to Spokane, Washington too, which, which I think is, is good. And Yale had to really, really battle to come from behind to beat Brown on a buzzer beater in the Ivy League championship. That goes to show you how sick in the head I am, how much basketball I paid attention to the last two days. Yeah. They won at the buzzer against Brown after being down. They were down, get this, Zach, six with 28 seconds to go. Yale was. So, you know, they're and they play a style that like Princeton played when they beat Arizona last year. You got to be careful. It's yeah. slow it down. You know, it's just a different – but they have a really good player. Yale, Yale's got a really good player. Now, maybe that was Harvard. There was Harvard that was a kid that was, that was linked to – he, he jumped in the portal that was supposed to be a really good – and a lot of teams are going after him. But, yeah, Yale, you just got to be careful with that stuff. But the athleticism and the, the defense that Auburn plays, that's a good matchup. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, I mean, all Yale is – it's a bunch of folks that couldn't get into Harvard. That's all they are. That's all they are. <laughs> and think about this. Four teams, right, from the state of Alabama getting in. That's pretty sporty. It's pretty insane, actually. I mean, UAB, Sanford, Auburn, and Alabama all getting in. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's good. Auburn's it's a 12 and a half point favorite right now, according to Harrison in the live chat. Yeah. That's I, a lot. That's a well, lot for a tournament game. And for those who haven't seen Yale play, just so they know style of play, it is that. It's it's slow it down, mm -hmm. shot clock. Uh, Auburn played somebody. They stop and study. But early in the, out. Earlier in the year that had that same style, and I can't remember who it was, but it may have even been an Ivy League school. But early in the non-conference schedule, Auburn played a team like that this year that really wanted to go deep into the shot clock, and it didn't work out well for them. Yeah. Was it App State? No. It, Auburn won the game. Okay. I like 20 because they could what they fell behind. And once they fell behind, got it. Yeah. Got it. Um, all right. Yeah. I, I like Auburn's chances against Yale. And like I said, I like Auburn's chances against San Diego. Penn. State. Thank you, Austin. It was Penn. Austin's right on top of it. Thank you, Austin. You kept doing that, remember? This you guy kept right doing here. that. The, yeah, you kept doing that the broadcast. You, you, you do Penn. That's, That's right. who it was. It was Penn. Thank you. That's right. Yep. All right, uh, give us your takes, your thoughts, your questions in the live chat. We'll uh, we'll address a few of those before we before we wrap up. But I, uh, man, this, and is, Harrison this is about to be too. fun. Thank you, thank yep. you. Yep, yep. Shout out to everyone. We love you all. Yeah, I mean, th this is such a fun time of year. This is such a fun time of year. And, and I've seen a few people in the live chat and also on Twitter say that you know they don't want to play UAB. And it's like ah, Auburn should always beat UAB. I'm not worried about. I would love if you could tell if you could give me the option. Like I would love to play UAB in the second round. Yeah, I mean, you know how few teams, how few 12 seeds you see in the Sweet 60? They can't do it twice. Like it's very hard to pull off that caliber of an upset twice in a row. Temple came in to the championship game against UAB today with a losing record, just got hot, got on a streak, four games, four games, four days, whatever. Yeah. And UAB beat them pretty good, but it got to be a, about a 10-point game late. I also saw UAB completely collapse against Memphis. So, yeah, give Andy C Kennedy credit. But if we're worried about UAB, then we don't need to be worried about how far we're going to go in the tournament. We need to have a different kind of mindset. Mm -hmm. It just needs to be whoever's in our way. And then, yeah, you get to UConn and stuff like that, then it changes the game. Right. Yeah, I um, I don't know, man. Like, I just think Auburn has a trump card with Jani Broom. Smaller teams that aren't elite teams, they're just going to have a hard time stopping Janai Broom. 
Look at what they did today, Daryl, against Florida. I guess the team was kind of built to stop that. It, it, yeah, with big, when the big guy went out, they still got another big guy that came right. They got two. They got the um, and he was effective for them. Yeah, yeah, he they was got two big guys. Just, they were exhausted. You could tell how tired they were in the second half. I don't think Yale has that. I think Janai Broom is going, and I think the national media they do have a thirty six ACT score though. They do, and yeah. I would love the national media to kind of do a little homework and read pronunciation, guys. It's not Johnny Broom. It's Janai Broom, and right. so I I think he will eat against Yale. I think I think it's going to be a a really nice matchup for him. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. Um, Tom asks, how do you see officials calling these games, SEC style or TikTok? I, I think it's in our TikTok. I, I think it's in, impossible to predict how an officiating crew is going to call these games. I hope. Every officiating crew throughout the entire tournament lets them play ball. And the more they let them play, the more it benefits the Tigers. So obviously, I think you mix crews, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think you like take an SEC crew and let them call a game. I think you mix officials. Maybe I'm wrong. But I know this. Big 12 and Big 10 officials, having watched a lot of basketball this year, basically let you play. They just – it's very they're very similar – Big 10 and Big 12, and Pac-12 and SEC officials were very similar that the games lasted three and a half hours long because they called mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. So it just depends on who you get. You get a Big 10 or Big 12 crew or a mixture thereof, they're going to let you play. Uh, you get Pac-12, well, there's not even a Pac-12 anymore, but with, when they the last year. Yeah, and then you better, you better get ready for, you know, putting somebody on the line 35 times. Folks are bringing up uh, Pat Adams. Would you be okay with Pat Adams calling Auburn's tournament game? Just give us Absolutely. your quick thoughts on how that would make you feel. I don't want Doug Chow's or Pat Adams, period. But you like Pat Adams, right? I'm sure he's a decent guy off the court. I, I don't I don't hate him personally. Um, Sometimes I, it seems like you do, though. Yeah, I probably need a different <laughs> – well, I guess when you are three feet from somebody – and you kind of watch them, their whole game, body language and ego and all that kind of stuff, you kind of develop a personal affront. And he is, again, I mean, I thought he was going to ask me to check my ticket because I came there to see him when I was courtside calling a game. But Would you uh, ever, uh, if you were at that game, would you ever yell at him? <sighs> Why do you do this to me? Yes, I might. I might do that. I told you the guy you that might yell at him. I told you the guy that didn't call the double dribble the very next year. I'm getting ready to call an Alabama State game, and he's the official. And he comes over to the you know he always daps. They always dap up the broadcasters. Right. I I, I took the high road. Cool. I took the high road. You didn't yell at him. Mm -mm, didn't yell at him at all. Got it. Got it. All right. I'm excited. I think Auburn makes it through the first weekend, but oh, I do too. I do too. I think this is, and it's not about matchups, and it's not about draws, and it's not about going out to Washington State. It's about this team, the way they're playing, the way they're trending, and how I feel what they have right now. I, it's just like I told you earlier, they have the it factor. So I, you, they could be playing in Aruba, and it wouldn't bother me right now. I just think yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. And I think, and this is why you do those, you know, those non conference games where they went up and played Baylor in one of the Dakotas and they went exactly. up in Brooklyn and played those. Like, that's why you do yes. that. Yes. Um, so, I mean, that it was, I don't remember if it was North or South Dakota, but one of the Dakotas, like, Washington's not that far away from them, right? So maybe an extra an hour flight or so. Do you remember that year? It was last year. You and I were doing games when Auburn played in a ballroom. I do. I'm trying to remember when that was. It was a tournament, and there was a, they were playing in a ballroom that yeah. they converted to a court. And I kept thinking, is it like those old Michael Jordan, Larry Bird horse commercials around the chandelier, through the food cart? I mean, what the heck was that? But that that is where Bruce is a genius because he takes you everywhere. They've played in Israel for goodness sakes. It's true. I mean, you know, so if they can play in if they can play in Tel Aviv. They can play in Spokane. Uh, I think so. What do you think the Auburn fan representation is going to look like in Spokane, Washington? 
That's tough I, because they travel so well, and it's one of the few places that it's going to be difficult to get as many people out there. Yeah, of course they'll show up because it's Auburn, it's the Auburn fan base. But that's a lot harder to get to than a Memphis or even an Omaha. Yeah, because we know I, Auburn had, travels to Omaha, right? We know that, right? Because yeah, of the baseball it, team. it's a little different too, though. I mean, Omaha is like the mecca of college baseball. This is a turn, but I've already had I've had two separate people say. Yeah, I'm going to try to get up to Boston and, and watch them play UConn. Easier flight. You go to Atlanta, especially if you're Atlanta to Auburn. Boston's is, is, is it's cake. 180 bucks totally. round trip. One, it's nonstop. Easy I think flight. a lot of Auburn fans are going to hold out, hoping they can go to that one, and they may not go this weekend. So I'm curious to see what that impact may look like. It's a good point because Atlanta to Boston's an easy flight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's easy, 100. percent All right, folks, please like the video. Please subscribe. Already? Wow, dude. 30 that... minutes already. Almost 31. We're seconds Dang. away from 31. Uh, Daryl, how can people check out everything that you've got going on? Wednesday and Friday, Locked on Auburn, the uh, regular broadcast that, we, that drops in the morning. Yes. Go ahead. You're going to say Real something. quick before people leave because they see that we're signing out. In the description, in the description, join the Locked on Auburn bracket challenge. The link is in the description. We'll try to make something happen for uh, for whoever wins it. Sounds good. And then um, any post game basketball show with you, which we can keep going now, uh, we'll do it. If you had to predict, how many more of these do we do this year? I'm going to say at least three. I think we do at least three as well. I think we yeah. do at least three as well. All right. Uh, follow me on socials at Z Blackerby. Please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. We are very close. The 16,000 subscribers, which doesn't seem like a real number. Thank you so much. Um, we'll be back tomorrow. Lindsey Crosby joins me for our regularly scheduled show, and we'll um, we'll jump into. Oh, one, one quick thing. I'm sorry. Practice and all that. Yep. Guess what? Everybody affiliated with Auburn will be when they wake up tomorrow morning. SEC champions. Amen. That's what we need to remember. All and this bracketology. Yale it. it. Yes. Just yell it. Yell it, baby. Yell SEC champs. SEC. SEC. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Love you all. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.